Hi friends, welcome back. Today we will code together to index codebase for AI. As part of codebase indexing, we will go through codebase chunking and embedding. Codebase chunking is a process of breaking down a codebase into smaller, semantically meaningful chunks. Coco Index leverages tree seeders capability to intelligently chunk code base based on the actual syntax structure rather than the arbitrary line breaks. Let's take a look at the tree seeder. So this is a tree seeder library. It is used to parse source code into concrete syntax trees usable in compilers, interpreters, text editors, and static analyzers. It is specialized for use in text editors as it supports incremental parsing for updating parse trees while code is edited in real time. The core engine of Coco Index is written in Rust, and Coco Index has built in Rust integration with tree setters to efficiently parse code and extract syntax trees for various programming languages. Let's first look at Coco Index documentation. Split recursively is a native built in function for chunking. To use split recursively for code base chunking, you will need to specify a language. It can be a language name, for example, Python, JavaScript, or a file extension, for example, .py, .js. To see all the supported language names and extensions, you can take a look at the code here. And we can quickly browse and take a look at what is supported. C++, C Sharp, CSS, Go, HTML, JavaScript, Markdown, Python, Rust, and many others. If you find this tutorial helpful, it would mean a lot to us if you could start Coco Index on GitHub to support us. Thank you so much with a warm coconut hug. So how Coco Index works is that you will declare your transformation and Coco Index handles the updates for you. There's lots of native built-ins to make it super easy as we're about to see, you can easily do a code base indexing with about 50 lines of Python code. In today's project, we will index the Coco Index code base itself. And let's look at how the flow looks like. First, we will read code files from the local file system. And then we are going to extract the file extensions because with Coco Index uh, code base, there's Python, there's Rust, there's configurations. And the next is uh, we're going to split the code into semantic chunks using tree seeder. And then we're going to uh, generate embeddings for each chunk. And at last, we will store them in a vector base for retrieval. All right, let's begin with some coding. First, uh, we'll make a directory. Code. Indexing. And let's make two files. And then your project setup. Okay. Let's open the PyProject2Mo and the project setup here. Make sure I add Coco Index as a dependencies. And we will install the dependencies. And now let's look at the main. Let's import the dependencies. Let's add the code base as source. In this example, we are going to index the Coco index code base from the root directory. You can change the path to the code base you want to index. We will index all the files with the extension of Python, Rust, Tomo, Markdown, MDX, and we will skip a few directories. Um, we are using flowbuilder.addSource. It will create a table with the following subfields, including the file name and the content of the file. Then let's also remember to add a collector. A data collector can be added from a specific data scope and it collects multiple entries of data from the same or child scope. So next, we're going to process each file. So with data scope files.row as a file, we'll iterate each file. Next, we're going to extract the file extensions. 
let's declare a custom function called extract file extension and it will extract the extension from any file name. And then let's plug that into the flow. We're going to read from the file name and from the file name, we're going to extract the extension and we're going to output it into a subfield extension. The extension here can be .rs, .py, .tomo, and all that. So next, we're going to read the file content and for each file content, we're going to call the native chunking function and we'll pass the uh, language to that chunking function as the language can take the file extension, for example, .py, .rs, and it will, it will handle the chunking of the uh, code base using the tree seeder. Uh, now we are going to process each chunk. So first let's uh, define a custom function to uh, embedding each chunk. So we're defining a code to embedding custom function. Uh, it is another, it defines a transformation in Cocoa Index and uses one of the native building function called tr sentence transformer embed. There are 12K models supported by Hugging Face and you can just pick your favorite model. So now we're going to embed each chunk. Let's iterate each chunk. And then we're going to call the code to embedding transformation that we just defined earlier. And make sure we collect the fields we needed. So here I'm going to collect the file name, the location, uh, the text of the chunk and the generated embedding. Finally, let's export the embeddings to a table. And that's it for the indexing flow. Super simple. I'm just going to quickly enter query handler and uh, use the, co uh, the same code embedding flow as above and choose the cosine similarity as default. And quickly end the main function for the initialization. Now we're all done. Let's make a .env file and copy paste the um, database URL for the Postgres. I'm going to do uh, one small fix. I'm going to change this to um, pass to include Cocoa Index because I'm running, a, uh, I'm starting a new project in a different directory. Um, and also I want to test the new incremental update feature. Um, so I'm just going to add this refresh interval uh, with 10 seconds. The refresh interval provides a change data capture mechanism. It is a universal approach that is applicable to all data sources. It allows periodic checks for uh, changes by scanning and comparing the current state with previous state. Uh, in this example, I'm just going to check every 10 seconds. And uh, when any changes happens, Cocoa Index is going to perform incremental processing on updates. Once the refresh interval argument is present in the live update mode, the data source will be refreshed by specific interval and the changes will be automatically captured and reflected on your index. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to run Cocoa Index setup. And then update the index. Now the update is done. I'm going to use Cocoa Insight to evaluate my index. Cocoa Insight provides you the best in class tools to understand your pipeline step by step, explains and helps you choose the best indexing strategy. It has zero data retention to your pipeline data. I'm going to run it with a dash L, then it's going to trigger the live update mode to make sure your source and destination are continuously updated.
So this is Coco Insight. The right side is the flow definition that we um, just worked on. And on the left side is a data explorer. It's a tabular view of all the data, including the intermediate steps. Maybe we can take a look at one of the um, Coco Index library files. So you click on the view, scroll to the bottom, and you can see uh, there's some chunking performed. So this was uh, done natively with a tree seeder. So now we're go. Let's let's add a new query. Then we will um, perform a search. And uh, I'm going to change this to cosine similarity. And let's search for vector similarity metric. Search. And we can see um, the second match here. Uh, there is going to be the vector similarity metric. I'm going to test the live index update. So I'm going to switch back to the editor and I will use, for example, uh, let's make this vector similarity metric two. And let's hit the search again. As you can see, this is already updated to vector similarity metric two. Um, as you can see, as, the, uh, as we updated the source code, the index automatically updated to reflect the change. Uh, that's because of uh, we are performing the incremental processing and the change data capture underneath. Incremental processing is one of the core values provided by Coco Index. Uh, in Coco Index, you users declare the transformation and don't need to worry about the work to keep index and sourcing in, source in sync. That makes it suitable for any ETL or rack or any transformation task. Then stays low latency between source and index updates, and also minimize the computation cost. And um, depending on the source, if you are building for editors, there is hook for the change as well. And event-based change data capture can make the pipeline even more effective. You can find the. Um, you can find the full source code in the Coco Index examples repo. Uh, it's right there. If you find this tutorial helpful, please support us with the GitHub star to subscribe to the latest changes. And thank you so much for your support. Please feel free to DM me or leave a comment if there's any example you'd like to see to build with Coco Index or if there's any topics you want to talk about in the ETL, RAG, data infra in general. All right, see you soon.